God compares an akazu so that my household can be full. So when a principality brings government, you need another agent to compare people to come. You can build a church but to be empty. You know, Jesus was speaking and Jesus said, for God so loved the world. And the way God manifested his love was to give us one thing. He summarized everything God gave us as one. He said, for God so loved the world, John 3.16, that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. One thing God gave everybody is eternal life. And then you ask yourself, what is eternal life? The day I dared to study it, I kept quiet. I knew we had not started to understand what Christianity is. The day you understand eternal life, you will understand what true Christianity is. And I can tell you, we have not understood it. Because what I knew about eternal life before now is that eternal life is a sickless life, is a deathless life. And so when you have eternal life, you can live above sickness, which is beautiful. But when I went to study eternal life, the first thing I saw that shook me was the meaning of eternal life itself. And what I saw was that eternal life is the life that powers the world to come. So the creatures that we live in the age to come, the life that we walk with is the life of God. That life is the life that powers that age. And so when God gave us eternal life, what he did was actually to give us authority now to live here as though we have already been raptured. It's just like having, wearing a suitcase or a, a and how do you call it now? A space suit on earth. So when you go to space, you are living comfortably there as though you have brought space into the earth realm. And so when astronauts are going to space, they will need a lot of gadgets to go there. But you now have the ability to function on earth as though you are in space. What eternal life did for us is to give us ability to live on earth as if we are in heaven. And so the reason we call it a deathless life is because in the world to come, nobody dies. The reason we call it a sickless life is because the world to come, nobody falls sick. However, it is bigger than a sickless life and a deathless life. It is the life of the age to come. And so what it goes to mean is that anything you read in the Bible that will happen in that age, you can do it now. And so beyond sickness, beyond death, you can choose to change your transport mode if you understand eternal life. You know why? Because in the world to come, they don't need planes to fly. In the world to come, they travel at the speed of thought. So a man who understands eternal life now, like Philip, he can leave Samaria and go to the wilderness by the speed of the wind. A man who understands eternal life can leave the wilderness and go to Asotot by the speed of the wind. So when there is a plane, he will fly. If there's no plane, he's still not limited. And so when God gave us eternal life, he wanted us to function as a wonder on the face of the earth. And so if you understand it, it means that no government can threaten you. It means that no individual can threaten you. Do you know what happened? When they arrested the apostles, they locked them in the prison and they said tomorrow they would decide their fate. They put soldiers at the door watching. You know, they were growing in this thing. The first time they arrested Peter, an angel had to come down. And when the angel came down, the chains of Peter fell off on their own accord. The prison door opened on their own accord and Peter went out. After a while, they started growing. Peter didn't need an angel to come down anymore. They locked them behind closed door. The soldiers were standing there till morning. When the Sanhedrin came in the morning and said, go and bring them, they opened the door. They were not there. They didn't need doors to open anymore. They bilocated from that place and went out because they had mastered this thing called eternal life. A point came, they didn't need angels to intervene. They have become like the angels. Because the life that powers the world where the angel lives, that's the life that powers them. So they can function in this body like angelic entities. And so why you were celebrating a huge testimony that an angel delivered Peter, Peter was growing. And the point came, Peter doesn't need angels. If you lock him behind closed door, he will come out, the door will still be locked. And you ask, where are they? They said they are standing in the temple preaching the word of this life. Because that's what they discovered. And so when they looked for them, they were not in the prison, they were in the temple. The same temple they told them not to enter and they were preaching the word of this life. And they say, how did they get there? They went there by eternal life. 
when Peter began to master this thing, a point came. Peter didn't need to lay hands on anybody. They said people are sick. Really? Put them, I'm waiting, I'm coming. And when Peter was done, doing, you know when he entered the temple in Acts chapter 3, the Bible said he saw a man that was lame and crippled. And the man begged them for money. And Peter looked at him and said, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. He was still growing. A point came in Acts chapter 5 verse 15. Peter doesn't need to give a speech anymore. They said they kept those who were sick. He had grown in eternal life. Anything that leaves me communicates the name of Jesus. Anything that leaves me communicates the power of Jesus. And when Peter was coming out of the same temple of prayer, they now lined up, no longer one, but many. And Peter didn't address anybody. Imagine if Peter was addressing all of them. Silver and gold have I known. Such as I have, I give you. Silver and gold have I known. He will be there from morning till night. But when he mastered eternal life, even his shadow could communicate it. And the Bible said they aligned everybody that was sick. And as Peter was passing, anybody his shadow touches, stands up. Anybody he touches, he stands up. How did Peter migrate from laying on of hands to laying on of shadow? It's eternal life. So what he was doing, he was bringing the world to come into their realm. And the moment you come under his shadow, you come under the atmosphere of that world. And instantly sickness will leave you because sickness does not exist in that realm. It's light. Christians are praying and begging for what they should be mass producing. Christians are begging for what God has given to them to give to the world. Do you know healing is not meant for believers who are growing? The least set of people in church are the ones who require healing. Children. He said healing is the children's bread. Because when he gave healing, he gave it actually for the world. He gave it for the world. Those who have no right to participate in the commonwealth of Israel. They are the ones we give healing to so that we can win them to Christ. And he didn't tell us to go and preach in order to heal the sick. We actually heal the sick before we preach. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they will cast out devils. They will lay hands on the sick. The sick will recover. When they recover, they will now ask you, what power is this? Then you will tell them it's Jesus. Because healing now becomes a byproduct of our reality. It flows out of us like a river. But how can that open? How can that work if we have not understood the life we carry? The same life that God carries. That's the life he put on our inside. But if light doesn't come, you will carry the life of God and die like a man. And that's why he said they know not. He said neither will they understand. He said they walk on in darkness. He said but I have said unto you, ye are gods because you are the children of the Most High. There is a life force and a life order in your spirit. When Christians gather waiting for healing, it breaks the heart of God. Why would they not know? That they are supposed to be rulers over sickness. Why would they not know that they are supposed to be rulers over the demonic realm? Light has not come. When the early church began to grow, they were growing in life. They were understanding life. They were mastering life. And so when you see people gather together, they are experimenting on the new things they have learned. And so when we gather, after we pray, there are those who should start learning to put these things to work. I touched the blind, the eyes open. I blew into the ear of the deaf, the ear open. That's, that's the practicals we should be doing in our gathering. That's the exercise we should be doing. Somebody said he's poor. I spoke life into his business. And after three days, the business began to grow. And then you are gathering those testimonies because you are putting life to work. You are exercising yourself in life. You are mastering life. Somebody said he cannot walk. You come out of the place of prayer. You put your hands there. It's not religion. You are transferring something. And as you are putting that hand, you are conscious. You are talking to the bones. You are releasing energy to the bones. And then you tell him, stretch the leg. I want to see how much voltage I have put inside. And he stretches the leg. It doesn't work. That's not the time to be afraid. That's the time to exercise. That's the time to engage. And you put your hands there. In fact, when I was studying this under Andrew Womack, I think either Andrew Womack or one other minister, I forgot it. No, Corey Blake. And Corey Blake said something. Corey Blake is the one who took over John G. Lake's ministry. And you know, in John G. Lake's ministry, it's practicals. It's not story. In fact, in his healing meetings, they call it divine healing technician meeting. 
That means you are workers, you are doctors, you are spiritual doctors. That's what it means. He said, when they touch somebody and the person is not healed, he said, what you do is increase the surface area. You know how you increase the surface area? You were touching like this. Your transmission was low. Increase it. Touch like this. You need to transmit more life. If it doesn't work, touch like this. Join the hand shoulder to shoulder. If it doesn't work, hug him. When you hug him, there will be enough voting. They understand the tangibility of life. See, there is something on your inside, sir. When you receive Jesus, you didn't join a religion. When you receive Jesus, you receive the life of God. Your work with the Holy Ghost is to master how to transmit it. And so when you are talking, talk with consciousness. You know why? Talk is the release of the energy of life. When you touch people, do it with consciousness. It's not when we come to church and religious, the people kneel down, you close your eyes, you lay hands on them. That's because your sensitivity level is low. So you need somebody to kneel down. You need to close your eye before you are able to transmit. Or God, when you master this thing, even in the market when you shake somebody, you know something has entered him. When you touch somebody in the bus, you know something has entered. Because we are distributors of life. We are communicators of life. That's what God gave us. So that we can saturate this world with his energy. So that we can saturate this world with his life. Imagine how many Christians are gathered here. If we understood eternal life, Kaduna is too small. Because when you are entering the market, you say, thank you, Father. I am going as a distributor of your life. And so you enter the market. A point comes, even the fruits you are touching, you are living life there. You don't know that fruits have life. You don't know they have life force, but you bring a superior life force. And somebody is sick, you hold an apple, go and give him. It's not religion. When he eats that apple, you have put something on that apple. And that apple will become a conveyor. That's what Paul knew. And Paul transferred it even on the handkerchief. Handkerchief. You think Paul is cleaning it. It's not. He's conscious that anything that touches him carries something. And Paul was invited for a meeting. He said, take my handkerchief there. What do you think Paul knows? It's not a mantle. It's a revelation. But it takes life. It takes light. It takes light. And when this light comes, you will just know. I carry something of God. I carry what powers God. And so when I show up, God shows up. When I act, God acts. When I touch, God touches. You carry this consciousness. And as the consciousness is growing, the bandwidth becomes larger. And when, when the bandwidth becomes larger, you discover that what flows out of you becomes higher. But many are not aware. That's why we think it's about shouting. So it's not about shouting. It's about voltage. It's about voltage. A man who carries this thing can sit down and say, hmm. When he says, hmm, what he will release into the atmosphere will be stronger than somebody else who doesn't have consciousness and is shouting, fire, 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 fire. It's not a rhyme. It's not a nursery rhyme. Something is in you. And when you become conscious of this thing, it flows out of you. And as it starts flowing out of you, it begins to change your world. Let our gathering not become religious. This is the school of the spirit. Where princes are taught their inheritances in Christ Jesus. He has given you his life. And everywhere you go, you have the authority to release that life. You have the power to communicate that life. That's what God gave you. The second thing God gave you is his name. You know when Mike was singing about the name of Jesus, I was just overwhelmed. Because some of the things God showed me, he humbled me. The name of Jesus came to make you vitally connected to heaven 247. You know, when you want to die the UK now, you must have to put plus 444. Plus 44, I beg your pardon. Otherwise, you have credit, but you can't dial it. If you want to dial America, you must do plus one. Canada, plus one. If you don't do it, you can't die. Any nation you want to access, there is a dialing code. Everybody that carries the name of Jesus is not just carrying the dialing code of heaven. He is connected to heaven. This is not religion, sir. This is to make you a vital participator of the heavenly realms. And so, the name of Jesus for us who are born again is not just what we call, it's what we wear. Because we need to be vitally connected to heaven at all times. And so, Romans 14, 13 say, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put him on make no occasion for the flesh listen when you are walking about 
you are walking about connected vitally to heaven because the name of the Lord has been named upon you in the Old Testament where they didn't have this opportunity the Bible said in Proverbs 18 10 it said the name of the Lord is a strong tower the righteous run it therein and they are saved in the New Testament we don't run into the name of Jesus we wear it it's our first garment and so when I touch you the name of Jesus touches you I don't even need to say in the name of Jesus no that's not how it works the reason you say in the name of Jesus is to help your consciousness Jesus came in the name of the Father you will never see Jesus casting out demons and say in the name of Jesus go out you will never see Jesus praying for the sick and say, and say in the name of the Father sorry go out he came in the name of the Father he was clothed with the Father so much so that Jesus said if you see me you have seen the Father if you touch me you have touched the Father so when Jesus looks at the demon he says get out the demon knows that he came in the name of the Father when Jesus sees the sick he touches them they are healed even the sickness knows that he came in the name of the Father for you who is a Christian when the consciousness of Jesus becomes strong on your life and you know you are wearing him when you come you'll be shocked that demons have not responded when they are there you just look at them you say out even they know they cannot stay because that name keeps you connected to heaven when you talk heaven moves number two that name activates the dimensions of God see in the Old Testament where you study the Bible there is something you will notice every time a man encounters God he gives it a name you know why they know the purpose of name names are not just for identification names are capsules that host dimensions name are capsules that release dimensions and so when Abraham encountered God and he said his El Shaddai he carried that name and gave it to his children so anytime they say El Shaddai the supplier supplies because if you have the name you can invoke the dimension you see that that's how they operated in the Old Testament so you see Jehovah Jireh Jehovah Nisi it's not because they are calling God many names in the Old Testament they didn't have enough light and a name that can encapsulate the totality of God and so they had to have a name for every dimension of God they wanted to see if they want to see power there is a name they will call if they want to see healing there's a name they will call if they want to see provision there's a name they will call but in the New Testament God doesn't want us to walk about calling a thousand and one nomenclature and so the Bible said he pleased the father that the fullness of the Godhead should dwell in Christ bodily and so when you come in the name of Jesus you come in El Shaddai you come in Nisi you come in Shama you come in Sharon El Shalom everything God represents is encapsulated in that day so when you wear that name what are you wearing you are wearing God and so when men see you they see God when they touch you they touch God in fact Jesus taught us to understand this so much he said when they hear you they hear me Luke chapter 10 verse 16 when they hear you he said they hear me I talk through you he said when they touch you they touch my realm they touch my dimension why is that so it's because a name was given to you does it not shock you only us have the right to use the name of God when Jesus was resurrecting he told them go and tell Peter and the disciples I'm going to my father and your father my God and your God from that day we received the right to call the name of God to wear the name of God to represent the name of God every other creature in the earth realm is hoping and trusting that one day they will have that privilege but you don't know what you carry as you are sitting here now El Shaddai is on you as you are sitting here now Nisi is on you Shama is on you Shalom is on you because when you say Jesus all of that dimension comes alive waiting for which one you want to use that's why you can come for a miracle service you say in the name of Jesus healings are taking place breakthroughs are happening different kinds of things people are receiving favor because every time you raise that name it's like a router anything you want in God you can take anything you trust in God you can have and that is not only for an apostle that is not only for a prophet that is for everyone that believes he said the name of the Lord is named upon you and so when you are going to the market you are going there with a consciousness I carry the name of Jesus and this name demons bow before it this name opens any door this this is not religion this is your consciousness because when light comes it becomes your reality 
Did you not read? He said he gave him a name that is above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. And Jesus has gone to heaven. Who is carrying that name now? It's you and I. And so when you call that name, every knee have no choice but to bow. Because we are using it legitimately. The problem with us is that we understand natural things. We don't understand spiritual things. If they call you from Aso Villa now and tell you, President Tinubu say go and represent him tomorrow in a function. You will quickly go and start looking to your best way. Because now you know you are coming in the name of the president. When you come to that meeting, your, your intonation will change. Your steps will change. You will sit down and be waiting for them to introduce you. You will just know that you are the sensation of the occasion. You will be waiting for the time when you will speak. And then when they call you, you will walk like a prince. And you will stand and start making even promises that Tinubi didn't tell you. That's how politicians set us up. They'll come and say, well, Mr. President said, Mr. President, Mr. President said nothing. But they have come in the name of Mr. President. So anything they say stands. And then you'll wear your best clothes and you'll hear a voice. Um, you know, uh, Nigeria has been struggling for some time. But the time for Nigeria has come. Who sent you with that one? You came in the name of the President. Can I assure you, Mr. President told me to tell you that things will happen this will happen this will happen and people will have no choice because you came in the name of mr president anything you promise they will take anything you say they will take unfortunately mr president will not do it but the one who sent us the bible says faithful is he that call it if you show up and you say in the name of jesus he must respond because jesus is not tinubu Jesus is not Obama. Jesus is not uh, Carlos Slim. Jesus is not Bill Gates. Jesus is the King of Kings. Jesus is the Lord of Lords. In as much as we respect all these people we have called, we know that they can fail because they are men. But he said, God will never fail. He said, the Lord changeth not. He is the same yesterday. He is the same today. And he's the same forever. I saw Abraham believe him. He didn't disappoint him. I saw Paul the Apostle believe him. He didn't disappoint him. I saw Peter believe him. He didn't disappoint him. And so I know, I know, I know that he cannot disappoint me. He's not in his repertoire. Even if you are not qualified because you have that name, he will respond for his name's sake. Because his name is at stake. His integrity is at stake. His name is at stake. His glory is at stake. His name is at stake. His throne is at stake. And so when you show up with that revelation, you just turn. You said, it is written. Jesus said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And as you are saying it, the hell will be shaking. Demons will be trembling. Because they know that when you call this name, the one that sent you will respond. They know he will answer. Every demon knows that God does not fail. You are the only one who is not aware. That's why you are calling it in fear. The day you know that God will not deny himself. And the day you know that demons already know. You will become intoxicated by that name. And so you are going to Kaduna. You say I come in the name of the Lord. You are going to Ghana. You say I come in the name of the Lord. You are going to Cameroon. You say I come in the name of the Lord. Because the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run it therein and they are saved. He has given him a name that is above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Every tongue should confess that Jesus is the Lord. You just come with audacity. See, faith will come alive in your spirit. Faith will come alive. Do you know why we expect honor? We expect miracles? We expect signs and wonders because we are coming in the name of someone. I know I'm not qualified. I know I don't deserve it. But the one who sent me deserves even much more. And so I will not be surprised anything that happens to me. That's how it works. When you start ministry, imagine those of you serving the apostle now. And then they invite him somewhere. He can't go. He now tells you, go there and represent me. The same city that you went to and trekked, nobody knew you came. Now you will enter. People will be dressed in suit waiting for you at the airport. Because you came in the name of another. The same honor that they should bestow upon him. They will have no choice. Even if they are not happy that he didn't come, they will put the honor on you. They will not like your face. They will put the honor. They will carry you in the jeep, take you to the hotel. 
and you'll be there enjoy yourself in a five star hotel you will wake up you are in a, you just enter a jacuzzi you take a shower you come back lie down ah this bed sometimes you don't even like the room you say I, I need another room the protocol will look at you are you okay you need another room when you look you say yes sir yes sir he will go back and be angry but you came in the name of another so he has no choice when they are carrying you to the meeting the driver is frowning and then you are asking him questions he will not be happy but he will still answer when you look at him he will smile by force because he has no choice when you enter the auditorium even your host is not happy but he has no choice because you didn't come in your name you came in the name of the one that sent you that's how demons operate when you show up you say in the name of jesus the demon looks at you he is angry but he will go out <laughs> yes you are oh. you go to certain places and then you see a demon that thinks it has taken over troubling and perfecting people you come and you say in the name of Jesus even the demon knows you know what you are saying the demon will be angry it will have no choice sometimes when they are going out out of pains they will look at you and say you will see they have no choice but they have to obey because you came by superior authority come out the demon will throw the person out but he has no choice it must go out sometimes you come and contact somebody whom destiny they have shattered and then you look at the person and you say in the name of jesus i change your story even the demons who have no choice but you see everything they have planted everything they have organized in order not to destroy their resources they will quickly take it because the moment you spoke that name their program has scattered i don't know what you know but I tell you, when you come in the name of Jesus, you come in the power of God. You come in the honor of God. You come in the glory of God. You come in the majesty of God. You come in the powers of heaven. There's something we carry. We are not ordinary. We are not victims. We are not at the mercy of society. We are not at the mercy of the systems of this world. We are not at the mercy of the wickedness of men. There is something we carry. For some of us, that name is a shield. They looked at you, they cost you, but you can't go down. They planned against you, you can't go down because there is something you carry. It's the name of the Most High. When you show up, because he's king, you come as a king. Because he's guarded, you come guarded. Because he's honored, you come honored. The devil can do nothing about it. Ha! Listen. We are so backward in spiritual knowledge. We are waiting for somebody to look at us and tell people that we are good. You won't find many of them. Who. If you are waiting for a man, you won't find. Because our word is a wicked word. But when you are going out of your house, carry that name. Carry that name. You will enter that place. They won't like you, but they have no choice. They will gang up against you, but they, they can't break you. They can't destroy you. Because until they destroy Jesus, they can't destroy you. And the last time we checked, he said having spoiled principalities and powers he made a public show of them triumphing over them by the cross every devil has already been defeated they know him is the lion of the tribe of judah so when you come in him you come as a lion this is why sometimes we are so intoxicated there are times where i wake up somebody calls me by 1 a.m and i carry the phone what is happening they are shouting my mother is dying oh oh they are trying to make me know it's important so that i will join them oh 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 i say relax where is your mother put the phone on her on her ears in the name of jesus death go back and then i'll go to bed i don't need to be agitated when i said jesus heaven moved <laughs> They, say, they are crying, they are shouting they want you to know this is a serious matter oh she's dying, 
death is not more powerful than Jesus. The Bible said he rose from the dead. He said, I am the one who was. I am the one who is. I am the one who is to come. I died, but now I live forevermore. Sometimes they are trying to make you know how important it is. They said, they said seven herbalists gathered together. Seven herbalists? They said, ah, they said somebody carried her picture into a calabash somewhere in Aquaibo. And they went to Calabar. Calabar? The one we are talking about. The Bible said he descended into Hades. He didn't fight everyone in heaven. He didn't fight demons in heaven. He went to their own territory. He didn't even fight them on earth. He said he descended to hell. It was in hell that the battle took place. In the stronghold of the devil, principalities came powers came rulers came wickedness came and when all of them gathered and they thought they had overcame overcome him the bible said on the third day he was raised back to life by the glory of the father and he said death could no longer hold him captive when they came to the tomb to look for him he said go and see the tomb is empty he has risen as he said it was not a coincidence he prophesied it before he died and when he died according to his word he rose again who is that devil where is that city he fought in hell and he overcame even the devil knows that coming to earth is a disadvantage you see why we chant sometimes these things intoxicate you and you don't know what to do you are in your room and it just becomes real to you and you tell yourself we are my enemies we are these demons we are those planning are you not aware that i'm clothed in christ i'm carrying heaven i'm carrying the power of god devil throw your best shot hey! yes, you are. Yes, you are. conference become a spiritual scientist start experimenting they tell you somebody is sick show up when you are done praying and your spirit is charged come look at the person say in the name of Jesus I give you three days be healed check on the first day check on the second day check on the third day if the person is not healed come back this time don't talk hold the person and command sickness to get out and don't give three days again say now you are healed and check 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 go to that your business that is dying no customer is coming go to that your contract go to that your your, your company document that nothing is working carry it and put on the ground pray in the holy ghost when you finish praying carry the paper and say now in the name of jesus all men seek you now in the name of jesus doors are open now in the name of jesus i command you to prosper go to that your ministry where nothing is working forget about everybody lock the door pray in the holy ghost after two hours stand up and begin to talk to the ministry in the name of jesus you are lost abroad in the name of jesus men are coming in the name of jesus resources are coming begin to war with the name war with the name war war with the name the name is a strong tower 